The Custom One guitar kit comes with a completed hard maple neck and a fully carved body. It's made from basswood with a flame maple top. The body is also completely routed for the electronics and wiring. This is a fitted neck guitar, but the body and neck have both been CNC machined. Notice the number 8 on both pieces. That shows that these pieces have been matched up at the factory. You do have to sand and finish the neck, but they put the whole fretboard on and all of the frets, which is a very good thing. Getting this fretboard right without a whole bunch of experience is just about impossible. The fact that they did this part at the factory means that you and I can build a guitar that actually works. And the kit comes with all the electronics that you need to actually get sound out of it. All of the soldering is done. We do have to plug some of the components in, but that's about it. One of the first things I'm going to do is slip the neck into position and temporarily clamp it in place. Notice I have the plastic covers on everything and I'm not going to apply a whole bunch of pressure. We just want to hold this together. If you're thinking this all sounds too easy, well, you're right. We have to lay out and drill the holes for the tailpiece and bridge. And if we get either one of those wrong, we're in big trouble. If we don't get these placements right, there isn't much chance of this sounding like a good guitar. The first thing I did was use a good straight edge to extend the sides of the fretboard down across the body of the guitar. These lines essentially give us a sight picture so we can get everything aligned with the neck itself. And I repeat the process from the other side and make sure you make light lines that will sand away easily later. This plastic piece at the end of the neck is called a nut and this is where all of our measurements will start from. When you have to install the bridge and tailpiece, the instructions will give you very specific dimensions on where these parts are located. With this guitar, that's complicated a little bit because we have to move the left side or the base side of the bridge back an eighth of an inch. That little angle in the bridge makes this guitar more tunable later on. Now I can draw a line through those two points to show me where my bridge has to go. The second horizontal line is where the tailpiece goes according to the dimensions in the instructions. The tailpiece is mounted square to the fingerboard. There is no angle to it. And then I can use the tailpiece and the bridge to mark out exactly where my bushings go for the mounting posts. And I use the long lines we drew earlier as a guide to make sure these pieces are centered. After I was very sure of my marks on where these pieces go, I went ahead and drilled the 7 16 inch diameter holes about one inch deep. And yes, this was a little nerve-wracking. Now we get to drive the bushings into those holes. I used a wooden mallet, but I also drilled a hole in a piece of plywood. So I could put that around the piece, drive the piece most of the way in, and then put that plywood on top of it and drive it down flush so I didn't mark up the surface of the guitar. I've installed the tailpiece, two tuners, and the outside strings. We're going to use those for positioning the bridge. Using the strings like this helps us make sure that the bridge is in a proper place in relation to the fingerboard. When I'm sure that the bridge is directly over our layout line with the strings holding in place, I use a drill bit that just barely fits in those holes to mark the centers for when I drill these holes. And then back to the drill press to make the final two holes. And then I can assemble a bridge on its post and make sure that that all fits properly. Now I can install the other major components, like the pickups, to make sure that they're in the proper place. Some kits will have all of the little mounting holes pre-drilled for you. This kit doesn't, so I have to use a small drill and pre-drill for all the screws to hold these components in. And this is a good time to check the fit of the rest of the components in case we need to sweeten some of that up. I know this sounds dumb, but after test fitting everything, they want you to take these bushings back out. I was pretty sure the wood was going to blow up when I did this, but it didn't, and it makes sense because you don't want to try masking around these when you apply finish. This style neck is glued in place, so I traced around it so we can mask off all the contact areas so it'll hold glue better later on. And I held the masking back just a little bit from my tracing line so the finish would actually run under the edge of the piece so I wouldn't have a gap around the edges after we assemble it. The fretboards usually stay unfinished also, so we have to mask that before applying finish to the rest of the neck. And then like any woodworking project, you do a whole bunch of sanding before you start finishing. You can finish a guitar just like you would any other woodworking project that's going to get handled a lot. This kit uses a cheap wood on the body of the guitar but with a nice flame maple top. So I'm going to accent the top, but coat out the back of the guitar so it's pretty dark, you can't see the grain all that well. 
I decided to tough it out with this guitar and use nitrocellulose lacquer, which is pretty hard to put on and get right. And that meant starting with a few coats of sanding sealer to start getting the wood smoothed out. I used just clear lacquer on the neck, a whole bunch of coats of it, with a lot of sanding and tack ragging between each of the coats. Here I've applied the base coat for my sunburst finish and a piece of masking tape around the outside that covers up the binding. One of the things I like about these lacquer finishes is that they buff out very well using the same equipment I use on all my woodworking projects. And here's what that sunburst looks like after I shot the darker color around the edges and then a bunch of coats of clear lacquer over the top. And now we can start putting things together for real. We just want to be very careful drilling pilot holes and screwing things in place carefully. And this is the body with all the major pieces already installed there. Now we have to strip off all that masking so we can glue the neck into the body. The instructions call for putting a whole bunch of glue in this joint and I'm going to take them at their word because I don't want this to move later on. Then I put the pieces together and clamped it up and wiped off all the excess glue. And I did take my time to make sure I got all of the glue cleaned up. Then after letting that neck joint set for a little over a day, I went ahead and installed the rest of the hardware and electronics and put on the first set of strings. First I hooked it up to my electronic tuner to make sure we had all the strings set just right. And it doesn't sound too bad. As with any guitar, we'll have to play around with the amplifier and the guitar settings to see what sounds best. It's common to see this style of guitar used in rock music because of its capabilities when you put some distortion behind it. The nice thing about most guitars is they don't care what kind of music you want to play or how many different kinds of music you want to play. And if you're just getting started with the guitar, one of these kits can make it cheap enough so you can get your feet wet and see what you want to play. Mm -hmm. 